So, thanks to the M2 Pro Mac Mini, which is just over there, I'm back in the Mac Mini game, which is very good news, and today I'm going to show you my favourite accessories for that computer. If you've been following this channel for a little while, you'll know that the setup behind me, based around that M2 Pro Mac Mini, is going to turn into a mini music production studio. That's not ready just yet, but make sure you subscribe and hit the bell not to miss those videos, wherever that button is. But in the meantime, I thought I'd show you what I've done in terms of accessories for the M2 Pro Mac Mini. I'll stop waffling and get straight into it. All of the products you see in this video will be linked in the description. So although the setup here will change in terms of the desk, one thing that won't change is the thing that I'm sitting on, which is this Hinomi H1 Pro chair. And this chair is basically a very affordable alternative to the likes of Herman Miller. If you've looked at those chairs and thought, wow, they look nice, but crikey, they're so expensive, then Hinomi is definitely worth a look. I made a video about this chair a few months ago, and since then, well, one, I can't stop using it because it's so comfortable, and two, it has been massively popular with my audience. Next up, we have the Satechi Hub and Dock. I featured this on the channel ages ago for the M1 Mac Mini originally, and again, a bit like this Hinomi chair, it has been massively popular. And I think the reason for that is because one, it looks fantastic, it matches the, the look and the aesthetics of the Mac Mini really well, I think. But secondly, and although the M2 Pro Mac Mini has loads of ports, you know, you get four Thunderbolt ports, which is fantastic, and two USB-A ports, they're all on the back, whereas having something on the front where you can plug in things you know, periodically, so if you're plugging in a SD card reader or perhaps a drive that you occasionally access, having to fiddle around the back to plug that into the Mac Mini is a pain. But with the Satechi, for 90 quid, which I think is okay really, it gives you access to USB-C and USB-A on the front of the device. But the best news for photographers and for video creators and anyone who uses memory cards is that you finally get access to an SD card slot and a micro SD card slot on the front as well. Now those ports on the front of the Satechi are slower than what you get on the back of the Mac Mini. They're five gigabytes per second for the USB-A and USB-C ports. But if you just use using it to connect accessories and occasionally connecting SSD drives where you don't need to worry too much about very fast transfer speeds, it's just so much more convenient. There is a version of this hub that has a built-in SSD drive enclosure. I've not tried that one, but I have tried an AGP Tech hub that has the same functionality, and that basically means you can put a two and a half inch SSD drive into the hub itself and extend your Mac's storage that way. But basically, if you want to extend your Mac Mini's usefulness when it comes to port access, but also the ability to have a proper SD card slot on the front of the device, then these hubs are just, a, they're an absolute no-brainer. Next up, we have this huge ultra-wide 34-inch monitor from MSI. Now, MSI don't make this exact model anymore, but I'll put a link to a similar one in the description. But this has been absolutely fantastic for the Mac Mini. And I've not been using it much up until now because I've been using the Apple Studio Display, which is a fantastic monitor, but it's also 1,500 quid. This cost me 350 quid. And okay, it's not as sharp as the Apple Studio Display. It's not as well-designed. It doesn't look quite as good as the studio display, but it's an awful lot cheaper. And actually, all of that screen estate is so, so useful. I'd forgotten how much I was missing this until I started using it again. And if you're doing any kind of production, whether it's music production, video editing, graphic design, photo editing, these ultra-wide monitors are a must-buy. The next item on my list is the iPad Mini 6, which might seem like a bit of a strange accessory for the Mac Mini, but the reason it makes this list is because it's, well, normally it's an ever-present sight alongside this monitor. I forgot it today, and what is telling is the fact that I really, really miss it. And the reason I miss it, and the reason it's normally over here on a nice Benx magnetic stand, is because, well, one, I don't use it as an extension of that monitor because I don't need to, there's loads of screen estate, but what I do use it for is a way to quickly glance at notifications. And also, because it's on that magnetic stand, I can quickly whip it off and take notes on it with the Apple Pencil 2 and the fantastic Paperlike screen protector. Paperlike are very kindly sponsoring this video, and their version 2.1 of their screen protector is absolutely amazing. And because I'm now also using this desk for Zoom calls, for things like the Medium Academy, my webinars, the 8 or 16 podcast, having the 
iPad mini right by the side of the monitor where I can grab it, make notes, put it back, carry on you know, checking notifications and all that sort of stuff. It's so convenient. On top of that monitor at the moment, there is a 1080p Logitech webcam. It was about 30 quid about four or five years ago, and it is terrible. The only reason it's on there at the minute is because I was doing some testing with it. Normally though, I use this this little cute thing here, which is the Insta360 Link. Now this isn't the cheapest webcam on the market. I think at the moment it's about 320 pounds and a bit more if you add some of the accessories to it. But if you do a lot of Zoom calls like I do for the reasons I mentioned a moment ago, it's actually a fantastic investment. It provides really good quality 4K video, but it also has this little gimbal thing on the top, which magically, well not magically, it uses AI to basically follow you around the room. It's really fast and accurate for that, you can't really fool it, I have tried. But also, if you do lots of meetings and kind of you know, demonstrations and coaching and that sort of stuff, it has some very useful features. One of them is the whiteboard mode, where you can basically have a whiteboard behind you, and this thing can be aware of the whiteboard and zoom into it. It also has a top-down mode, where the camera swings down and shows your desk, so you can demonstrate stuff. And you can even attach it to a tripod, as you can see here. It's just a very flexible little camera. I'll link a Above to a full video that I made of this, but I've been so impressed with it. Insta360 makes some lovely camera gear. When I first set this desk up as it is now with the M2 Pro Mac Mini, I had to find a keyboard very quickly, and, well, it came down to this, which is the Apple Magic Keyboard. I had one knocking about, and it just made sense to use it. However, I've decided to keep it on the desk because it's actually a fantastic keyboard. Unfortunately, you don't get a keyboard or a mouse or a trackpad with the M2 Pro Mac Mini or any of the Mac Minis, so you do need to buy one. Okay, granted, the Apple Magic Keyboards are quite expensive. There are some nice alternatives from the likes of Logitech and a few others, but for me, the fact I had this lying around, it made sense to use it. And okay, it's not as clickety-clackety as the mechanical keyboards that I know and love, but that's actually quite a big benefit because again, going back to the use of this station for Zoom calls, having a quiet keyboard is really handy. The mouse, I'm so boring about this, I'm sorry. It is the Logitech MX Master 3. I won't ramble on about it here because I've talked about it enough. It's fast, it's accurate, it's the most comfortable mouse I've ever put my hand on. It's got loads of buttons that you can customize to the nth degree, and it's pretty tough as well. I take this with me everywhere, so it gets chucked around quite a bit. I've got a nice little case for it, which I'll link to in the description as well, but it does take a bit of a battering actually. And yeah, I won't go on about it. If you need a mouse, get yourself a Logitech MX Master 3, or the 3S, which is the new one. But yeah, just go and get one. The last thing on my list is my big knob from Mackie. So yeah, it's got a childishly silly name, and it's a bit of a niche addition to this list, to be fair. Basically, it is a audio interface, but also a multiple monitor controller. And when I say monitor, I mean monitor speakers. So unless you're into your music production, it's not going to be that interesting, I don't think. Although, again, it's got, got a funny name, hasn't it? So we might as well talk about it. But basically, that big knob is the first hint at what this M2 Pro Mac Mini setup is going to turn into. So it's the first thing that is linked to the music production side of things. It enables me to get really high quality sound into the M2 Pro Mac Mini. At the moment, the only thing going into the Mac Mini is the Shure SM7B mic over there, which I use for podcasting. But in the future, there may be other things going into it. But secondly, it has a really high quality output as well, so I can connect a pair of headphones like these Mackie MC450s, or or, as I mentioned earlier, I can connect a pair of studio monitors. So the Mackie Big Knob is a bit niche, it's a bit music producer-y, but it's worth mentioning because it's on the desk, and like I say, it's going to be playing a very big role in this setup going forward. I hope you found something of interest from my Mac Mini setup, but if you've got your own list of Mac Mini accessories and you think I've missed out on something really awesome, let me know in the comments. And in the meantime, if you want to know more about the M2 Pro Mac Mini that sits at the heart of this desk, keep watching for a link to my full review.